Good morning, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is another part of Parables with Jesus, and we're talking about the parable of the ten virgins or the parable of the wise and foolish versions, depending on which uh, uh, Bible you're reading from. I'm going to read off the New King James Version, and uh, uh, so today we are going to Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. And listen, this is talking about the end of days. This is talking about being watchful. This is, the, so th just pay attention to this. This is going to bless you. Send this to somebody. Somebody needs to hear this. Uh, uh, so share this with somebody. Um, but before we get started, let us pray. All right. Dear God, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. We, we want to praise your holy name this morning, Lord God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. Open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive your word uh, 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 this morning, Lord God. That it may change us, that it may rearrange us, that we will never be the same again after today, Lord God. We thank you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So listen, we're going to Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13, all right? And uh, we're going to get right into it because this is, this is a lot. This is a lot of, of, of just in one little parable, all right? So Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. And like I said, I'm reading off the New King James Version. And this is Jesus talking right here, and so pay attention because just watch what he's about to say, all right? Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to, to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, so five were wise, and five were foolish. Five were foolish. That's 50 percent, 50-50, right? Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming out. It's coming. Go out and meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should be not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins, vir virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Okay. Watch this. So we're talking about uh, uh, there's, a, there's a wedding happening. There's a bridegroom, and, and there, there, is some, uh, uh, there is some bride uh, uh, bridesmaids, right? These are the ten virgins. They're, they're bridesmaids. There's ten of them, okay? Who is the bridegroom? Jesus Christ is the bridegroom in this story, okay? So there's a little things that we got to go over. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. Okay, who is the bride? The church as a whole is the bride. And the Bible says that the church is the bride of Christ. Amen. Okay, so who are the bridesmaids? Each and individual one of us is the bridesmaids. The church is the whole. The bridesmaids, it's each individual Christian. Okay, now pay attention. So, now that we know that, we have established that, so there is, there, there is a, a, they're waiting, the bridesmaids are wait, waiting for the bridegroom to come, okay? And it, and, and it gets late, and it gets, they get tired, and, and, and they fall asleep, okay? Were they foolish because they fell asleep? No, that's not what it says. So, they say that there is five wise and five foolish, all right? The wise ones were the ones that had oil for their lamp, okay? The other ones didn't have no oil for their lamps. Their lamps didn't work, all right? So they're, they're in the dark, 
Okay, it's midnight, it's past hour, it's, it's late, and they get tired and weary because they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the bridegroom to come. He's not coming. And they get tired. And then when they least expect that he's coming, they sound the trumpets, they yell, they said, hey, he's coming. And there were five that were prepared for him because they had the oil in their lamps and they, they lit up their lamps and, and they were ready for him. But there was five of them that weren't ready for them, for him. Because they didn't have the oil, they didn't have their lamps ready. Okay? This is talking about the end of days when Jesus Christ is going to come back, return for his bride, for uh, uh, the church. He's going to return for, for us. When you least expect it, at midnight represents the time and hour when you least expect it, when you grow tired, when you think it's, oh, it's never going to happen. Look at the word, look at the world. Everything's going on. I'm tired. I'm weary. Look at all the evil that's happening. When are you coming, Jesus? When you least expect it, that's when he'll, arri he'll arrive. So it says here, be ready. Be watchful. Be ready. And the wise ones, they were ready, but the foolish ones were not ready. So we have to be ready. So watch this. Midnight, I already told you, represents the darkest time and hour when you least expect it, right? The lamp. What does the lamp represent? It's your heart. The lamp rep represents your heart. Inside your heart, you should carry a fire. What is the fire? When you see these, these, these lamps back then, they had little oil on them to keep the flames burning. Okay? It's not like our lamps today that you can plug them into the wall. Those lamps back then, okay, they didn't have electricity back then, okay? So they couldn't plug anything into the wall. It would be useless, all right? So they had little lamps, okay? And it was a contraption with a wick, okay? And the wick, you had to dip it in the oil so it can keep aflamed. It's kind of like your gas stove, right? It's like that. You need gas to keep the flames burning or your propane, right? So. Just think of it that way. It, without the oil, they couldn't keep the flames, okay? If you are the lamp, okay, and the flames is the word of God. It is the living word. It is the Bible, okay? The oil represents the Holy Spirit of God. That's God's spirit. Without the Holy Spirit... You don't have a fire. You don't have the flame. Okay? Remember John the Baptist? He said, I baptize you with water, but there comes someone after me that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the oil represents the Holy Spirit in this, in this case. Okay? The fire is the word of God. 50-50, there is 50, uh, uh, think about all the churches in the United States and all over the world that proclaim to be Christians. There is 50% of them that are wise and 50% that are foolish. 50% of them don't have that oil. That means they don't have the Holy Spirit. That means all they're doing is making noises. If you are going to a church where you're just going, you're sitting there, and nothing ever happens, they're giving you the five lessons to improve your life, the five secrets of wealth, and all this crap that it is, okay, and they ain't giving you the Holy Spirit, you're going to be like one of these foolish brides. They were there. They missed it. What did they miss? The door was shut and they couldn't go in. And what did Jesus say? 
I don't know you. I don't know you. They shut the door. That means there's a lot of Christians today that say, I just want to do the bare minimum. I just want to get by. They, they, they want that salvation without their true relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't have it. See, when you have the true relationship with Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ gives you the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit transforms you, gives you the fire for the word, and it, you begin to change. But today's society, they want to be Christians, they want to be called Christians, but they do not want to do what the Bible tells them to do. They want to do their will, not God's will. I want to be saved, but I still want to do all these crazy things and all this and that. But I, I, I want to go to heaven, but I, I still want to do all these crazy things. You cannot. When you begin to have a relationship with God, you begin to transform your mind. When you begin to transform your mind, it is no longer your will be done, but it's God's will be done upon earth. You can't have salvation without the, tr the transformation. You can't have it. It's impossible. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect, okay? Because we're not perfect. We fall short of his glory. But the good thing is when you, when you have a relationship with God, you, you do something foolish or dumb and you ask God for forgiveness, okay? But you must learn from it. You got to learn from it, right? 50-50. Listen, 50-50. So one, the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Two, the bride, the church as a whole. Three, bridesmaids, you as individual, Christians. All right? Midnight, the darkest time, an hour that you least expect it. The lamp is your heart. The fire is the word of God. All right? The oil represents the Holy Spirit. The door represents the door being shut represents the way into heaven. Jesus Christ says, I am the door. Whew. There's no way around it. You have to go through Jesus Christ. There's no way around it. When you die or when Jesus comes back, you want to be ready. Okay? What does being ready mean? Reading your word. Getting into that relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? Not just saying, oh, I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I went to church for a second and that was it. No, no, read the word, spend time with God yourself. We can't do this relationship. You have to go straight to the source. I'm just here preaching the fire Preaching the word so that you can go directly to Jesus Christ. I am not the one. None of the pastors can save you. Only Jesus Christ. That's why it doesn't work when you go to a priest. It doesn't work. You have to go directly to, to the source. Jesus Christ came in this world to, to break those traditions, to break those things. He said, I come that I tore the curtain. That means you can go directly to the source, to Jesus Christ. That's what those curtains were for the priests, right? You go and you confess to the priest and the priest goes to him. No, no, no. You can go straight to the source. Talk to him. He wants a relationship with you. A relationship. That means a give and take. That means a listen and a talk. You talk for a minute, then you listen to God. What do you, what do you want to say to me, God? Not just, oh, give me, give me, give me. It's a relationship. If you had a relationship with, with, with a, 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 your husband or a wife like that, it's just you come, no, no, you, you just give me, give me, give me. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to hear you out. You wouldn't have a relationship for too long. 
That's just a one-way relationship. That doesn't work. That's not a relationship. A relationship is a two-way relationship. Two-way communication. Okay? This is some good stuff, but you have to realize. Now, now understand this. Watch this. It, I'm going to read it again because this is, so, this is so beautiful. Watch this. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Okay, bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Now five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. 50, 50, 50%, 50 right? Half of them were wise, half of them were foolish. Listen, if you're probably pointing out and thinking of all the Christian friends that you know and thinking of them like, I think this one's the foolish one, this one. You're probably the foolish one. You need to look into yourself, all right? So examine yourself. All right? You want to be wise. You do not want to be one of the foolish ones. All right? So check this out. Then those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, okay, at midnight, the darkest time in the hour, when we least expect Jesus Christ to come back, because they were all asleep. The Christians and, and, and the, and the so-called pretending Christians, so the, the, the wise and the foolish ones, right, they were all asleep. They all fell asleep. That means we're, none of us, neither the secular, neither the Christians, ne none of us are going to really know when Jesus is coming. Okay? When you least expect it. The, 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 the darkest time in your life, the, the craziest time of... Uh, uh, the darkest hour of your life, okay, when you're at your most dire need of a savior, that's when Jesus shows up in your life. Somebody needs a miracle right now, okay? This is your moment at the least time in expectancy when you are right there at the altar, when you are right there at your bed, when you are the most sickest, when you are the, the most dying in need, when you are addicted, right now, Jesus Christ wants to show up in your life right now. Will you receive him? Receive his miracle. Receive his salvation right now. That's a word for somebody right now. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. When you need him the most, he shows up. Amen? Watch this. At midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, So the foolish were saying, Hey, give me some of your oil. It doesn't work that way. Right? That's what I just said. I can't give you some of my Holy Spirit. All right? You have to go straight to the source to get it yourself. Begin that relationship with him. Amen? Man, I had so many good notes, and it's just coming out, so it's just uh, it's out, all right? So the wise ones were ready. The foolish ones were not. Amen? So watch this. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready, those who were ready, right, the ones that were ready, went in with, went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. All right? So the wedding banquet. I preached about the wedding banquet. What does the wedding banquet mean? That's the, that, that, that's the, uh, uh, the wedding banquet is heaven, all right? The door is the way into heaven. So they shut the door. The ones that were, re the, the ones that were ready, they went in. The ones that were not ready didn't come in. And then when they came back and they're like, hey, hey, let me in, Lord, let me in. What did he say? Afterwards, the virgins came also saying, the Lord, Lord, open to us. That's verse 11. But he answered and said, surely I say to you, I do not know you. He said, I don't know you. Watch therefore, and then it says this, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. If a preacher ever tells you, I know, I know the date or the year that Jesus Christ is coming, he is a false prophet, a false teacher, 
because no one knows. Jesus Christ said, no one knows. No one knows when I'm coming back. But he tells you to be ready, right? And listen, you do not want to be on this other end of the door. You do not want to be on that other end of the door, okay? You do not want to hear, Lord, Lord, uh, you do not want to hear, I do not know you, right? When you get to the door, you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You're either going to hear that or you're going to hear, I do not know you. So you want to make sure that you hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, right? Watch this. Remember in Matthew 7, verse 22, Jesus said, Not everyone that says in my name will enter into heaven. You must do the will of the Father. But I did this in the in, but I did this and that in your name, Lord. I did all these good deeds. I was living my best life. I was going to church as a Christian, right? People say that. Well, I did this, God. I, I went to church. I, I, I was doing all these things. I said your name. Yes, but he did not know you. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you know the Father. Doesn't mean you have that relationship. Like I said, that relationship is a true relationship when you begin to talk to Jesus Christ, when you begin to talk to your Father, God. Begin to talk to him, begin to spend some time with him, listen, pay attention, praise and worship him. A lot of people miss that. They miss the praise and worship part. They miss that true relationship with him. And they go straight to the prayer. God, I want this right now. Like, hey, dad, how you doing? Right? I'm a father. I want to hear, hey, dad, how's it going, dad? I love you, dad. You know, I want to hug sometimes. I, I want to kiss them. I want to grab them. I want to say, how's your day? How, how, how did it go today? Right? It's a give and take relationship. It's not just one way. Hey, dad, I need this. Hey, dad, I need this. Hey, dad, I need this. That's not a relationship. That's an ATM machine. That doesn't work with God. If you're only going to him for prayer when you need something from him, you're failing in your relationship with him. Doesn't mean you don't, when you need something, go to him. I'm not saying not to go to him. But make sure you're going to him when you don't need something. Make sure you're just going to him saying, thank you for being you, who you are, God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. This is some good stuff. Like I heard preachers say before, I'm going to buy this tape myself. Preach it to myself. Listen. See, you can't have salvation without a true relationship with God. A true relationship with God, with Jesus, will bring forth the Father's will. Right? We, we talked about prayer. Not my will be done, but God's will. But your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? That's what Jesus said to pray. So, a true relationship, you will let go of your selfish desires and you will begin to pray, God, let your will be done upon my life. Okay? A true relationship, not my will, but your will be done. And the Holy Spirit will bring forth change upon your life. You can't have it. You, you can't have that relationship. When you have that relationship, you will transform. God transforms you. You will no longer think the same. Why? Because God opened up your eyes to a whole new truth and reality. Not what the devil's been telling you, all the lies and deceptions. So there must be transformation from all the lies and deceptions from the devil. Some of these people, they want to stay with all the lies and deceptions of the devil, but still claim Jesus Christ. It doesn't work that way. And you see the world doing it a, a whole lot more in these days. You see a lot of these, these, these people, they go up and while they want a, uh, 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 a trophy for a song, booty shaking and all these crazy things and they thank God for it. That is not God. 
God didn't say sell sex, money, and all these things to children. No, no, no. That's the lies of the devil. That's the deceitfulness. Read the word for yourself. Don't take it from all these celebrities. Don't take it from all... Uh, 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 read the word for yourself. Begin a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Do it today. Don't hesitate. Be ready. Be a wise one. Amen? Don't be foolish. Be ready. Be watchful. Okay? That doesn't mean you're just looking up at the sky saying, okay, when is he coming? When is he coming? No, no, no. Be watchful means be alert. Read the word. Be alert. Look at the signs around us. It's getting closer. Now, I'm not here to tell you that Jesus Christ is going to return tomorrow, next week, or next year. I do not know. My job is to tell you to be ready. Be ready. Amen. I hope this blessed you. I hope this encouraged you. And share this. I could be teaching you all kinds of, all kinds of mess about how to bring wealth into your life. But I got to give you the truth. And this is the truth. The truth will set you free. All these other things will keep you in bondage. Keep you in deceit, deceitful lies from the devil. Yes, the devil is dece deceiving a lot of people in church. Be awake, be alert, and be ready. All right? Before we leave, I want to pray with you. So let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for your word, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord God. We want to be ready, Lord God, when you come up. When you come back, Lord God, or when, when we get to heaven, Lord God, we want to be ready that you welcome us in, in those doors, Lord God. We thank you for that, Lord God. And, and, and Lord God, begin to touch people right now, Lord God. Those that are sick right now, Lord God, uh, uh, we pray healing upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to feel the Holy Spirit, begin to worship, begin to praise him right where you're at. And begin to thank him for your miracle. We thank you, Lord God. And Lord, if we have done any sin, any wrong, Lord God, forgive us of our sins. We want to be ready for you. Lord, help us to be closer to you and to have a real relationship with you. In your precious name, amen. God bless you. See you next week. God bless.